Well, this is Betting Weekly Extra Time European Edition. You're with myself, Dan Roebuck, Senior Handicapper. Steve Wiss is alongside me, as are Daniele Fisichella and James Eastham. Steve, only one match day left in Italy and Spain. You can tackle Spain for us. What's done, dusted? What teams should we be looking out for that need results for one reason or another? Well, good day to you all. This is the final hurdle. This is the last European preview show of the season and what a well, it's been ups and downs, hasn't it? Um, probably more downs than ups in terms of results at times. <laughs> but here we are with this. Uh, we, we have reached the the end of the of the season, and um, yeah, I'm going to be tackling a lot of the Spanish games this week. And the news to tell you is actually that there is literally nothing at stake. <laughs> 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 like I right, that the, the top eight positions are actually all decided. Would you believe that? I mean, people were moaning about the Premier League. Last um, last weekend, saying, "Oh, apart from the title race, there's not really much else going on." Well, this takes it to a completely different level. We know the three teams who are getting relegated. <laughs> Positions are up for grabs between ninth and seventeenth. Um, so that's really all all that's at stake. And <laughs> look, you can you can tell with the kickoff times, they're actually staggered around quite a bit, which shows you really there's not that much going on. There's a, the more interesting race is probably the top scorer of the Pachichi race. OK, um, I mean, Steve, should we should we play overs? Do you think they're going to play with a bit of freedom? We could play overs the lot, couldn't we? Yeah, could we but also we, teams could, could be lazy. Bundes, because Spain hasn't been in a massive overs league this year. Average is 2.63. I mean, should we just go overs on the lot or not? Not for me, because, <laughs> I mean, actually, I want to give a shout out to, to one of the regular watchers, um, Nico. Yeah, who Nico did the Bundesliga, last week, didn't he? He said, um, um, good, you know, he actually backed all the over two and a halves. And um, I know he was worried about my underpick. Uh, yeah, but I thought he was going to get... cop until the last minute. Well, the the equaliser cost cost me, and then obviously there was actually a missed penalty. And they got the rebound, so every match in the Bundesliga went over. But what you got to remember with Spain is it's a lot hotter weather. Teams might be less inclined to really go for it in the heat, and it has been a, quite an unders league, you know. Yeah, La Liga this season, so. You know, you're the man with those uh, stats, Dan. But um, so I wouldn't be looking at a goal bonanza on the final round here, but weird things can happen. Yeah, interesting that there's literally nothing to play for in Spain, <laughs> just as, as Steve says, just the top goal scorer. Uh, Daniele, uh, we t- briefly touched on the Serie A situation last week. Is the picture any clearer here when it comes to Serie A? Atalanta obviously confirmed in the group stages um, of the Champions League next season with that uh, brilliant Europa League win over Levy, because I think they're in anyway. But sixth spot could be another Champions League spot. It depends on lots of stuff, or does it? Daniele, explain. It depends on Atalanta. So now Atalanta, who, by the way, got a game in hand, played on the 3rd of June against Fiorentina, can decide if they want to finish fifth, fourth, or third in the table. Now, if they finish outside of the top four, Italy going to have for sure six teams in the next season Champions League. So Roma are going to qualify in the Champions League as sixth. But if Atalanta finishes in the top four, then no, they're only going to be five teams. Now, why would Atalanta want to spoil the party of Roma? Because they can. Uh, and also because there is a little financial issues there. If uh, Italy qualifies six teams to the Champions League, the prize pot, the pot money for Italian teams are going to be divided by six. So imagine you got a cake and five people eating it. Out of a sudden, come a sixth one and says, well, I'm going to have a slice of that. Some people are obviously greedier than others. (laughs) But when it comes to the relegation, it's much, much clearer. Empoli will be saved if they win the game against Roma. Udinese will be saved if they equal Empoli results or if they draw, of course, Empoli loses. Frosinone have got two results out of three to be saved, either win or draw against Udinese. No cake in (laughs) there. Brilliant stuff. Um, James, just the French Cup final to look forward to from a a French point of view. You're going to tackle uh, a shot on target outside of France as well. But this is a big game, isn't it, Leon? Uh, against uh, Paris Saint-Germain, not taking place in the capital for the first time ever. Is that right, I think? First time for a long time, Dan. Right. Yeah, I think uh, over 100 years. But yeah, you're right. It's usually at the Stade de France is the French Cup final, as you'd expect in the National Stadium, which is undergoing renovations ahead of the Olympic Games this summer. It's been um, reconditioned to host, I think, the rugby 
um, sevens as well as the athletics. So no Stade de France. So the game is taking place in Lille. Just wonder if that will give Lyon maybe a slight advantage that it's more of a neutral venue, I guess, uh, than when it's in Paris for Paris Saint-Germain. Um, certainly limits the number of fans that are going to be at the game. Uh, Lille is a 50,000-seater stadium, uh, but I think only 15,000 tickets are going to each of the two clubs. So, yeah, maybe levels things up a little bit. Um, PSG, obviously massive favourites to win, um, but we'll get into all of that as we go through the picks today. Yes, we will indeed, because James has got an awful lot of picks for us in the French Cup final. We will get it covered for you. We've got the usual two U plays. We've got a couple of one unit plays. We've got a hot dog apiece. We've got a favourite to fade uh, after last week's success, not. And we've got <laughs> parlays as well uh, to come. We'll get some correct score picks also for you on uh, the games in Italy and Spain and in the Cup final in France. We're going to kick off, as per usual, with uh, Steve's two U play. Uh, Steve's been absolutely firing these in left, right and centre. We are in profits for the current lineup for two unit plays, incidentally, since February. So if you've been playing these big staking games and following our advice, you will be uh, very much in the black. Um, Lazio Sassuolo, Steve, you're going to tackle a Serie A game for us here. 245 Sunday here. Lazio short price favourites. They are one of the form teams in Italy. And of course, Sassuolo have been relegated. Yeah, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes, uh, this is actually my first pick in Serie A um, since uh, Daniele was part of the main set of lineups. Mm, so, no pressure. Uh, quite a while no. ago. I mean, I've actually, I did my, um, I've actually had five picks in Serie A this season, and I'm in profit. I'm in profit nice. for it. I'm plus zero point one up. Um, so first time I've done the two unit play in uh, in Italy as well. Going with Lazio minus one point two five Asian handicap and. Um, this is at minus 118 against uh, Sassuolo side who have just been relegated. Now, this is a situation I always quite like in general football around the world, really. Um, when they've just gone down, especially it's quite close to the end of the season, it's pretty demoralising for a team. And, um, you know, they know the game is up now. They actually recently beat Inter. One nil. I don't even know how that happened, but um, wow. then they didn't back it. They didn't back it up with uh, results against um, teams down at the bottom of the table. But the big problem for Sassuolo this season, I don't know if anyone even predicted them to struggle, by the way, pre-season, Daniele. No one really thought they'd go down, did they? Um, the shocking away record. 13 defeats out of 18. Um, just two wins on the road. Yeah, they don't travel well. I just think Lazio can pick them off here. Um, Lazio, nothing to play for. As far as I'm aware, the head-to-head -head with yep. Roma is uh, against them, so they, you know, they can have a bit of fun. Maybe they won't be as focused, but they've had they finished the season quite well. Um, if you look at them, their results recently, pretty solid stuff, and a good chance that they actually might win this match to nil as well, Dan. Which um, I always like that if you're taking a handicap, uh, you know, if you certainly think that they won't, the team won't concede a goal then uh, something like 2 nil feels about right here. 2 nil, even 3 nil. I just think Sassuolo, the game's up. They might just throw in the towel here. Um, you know, nothing at stake at all. Real demoralising feeling after being relegated. The results since, what, Christmas have been abysmal. Uh, away from home, absolutely shocking. Lazio, for me, can finish the season with a feel-good victory in front of their own fans. And they're just the better side anyway. Minus 1.25 Asian handicap means even if they win by one goal, we're only losing half. So I mean, this is the two-unit stake, so I'll make the most of it. Um, Dan, it just looked like an obvious an obvious bet to me in Serie A this week. Daniele, happy with that one? Yeah, I think uh, it makes sense to back, of course, the home side. They've done better since uh, Tudor came in charge. A good game against Inter, really could have scored a couple of goals. Can't see Sassuolo winning. Problem with Sassuolo, they missed the key player, Berardi, three times this season due to injuries and at the beginning of the season because he was talked to go to Juventus. And then, yeah, in the crucial stage of the season, he wasn't there. Such a leaky defense. They're going to go down after 11 years in Serie A. Not easy for them to go back straight up, really. I think they're going to struggle. Do you think Berardi will leave? Well, he should leave. I mean, uh, yeah, maybe he should have left last summer. Yeah, he should have left last summer, going to you or Milan. But yeah, I think, I, think, I think he will leave. I think a lot of all the 30s players will leave. They will rebuild. It will be tough, you know. Um, not a great fan base. Very difficult to make football in the Italian province. So, yeah, let's see, let's see when and if they come back up. 
Uh, Empoli Roma for Daniele for Daniele's two uni play. Um, Empoli plus 100, Roma plus 265. Roma are a massive price here. Yes. As Daniele's explained already, Empoli really need to win to have any chance of staying up. But they are very short. Roma will finish six. But I sense this is a, a pick that comes via the price because normal pricing doesn't apply because of what's at stake for Empoli. And technically, Roma, nothing to play for here, Daniele. So... You look, Roma obviously had a good season under uh, De Rossi. Talk us through your play here. My play is to back uh, the underdog, Roma. Yes, you heard it right. Roma, Asian handicap plus 0.75, pays minus 152. And I think this is even a conservative one, which means if Roma loses by one goal, you only lose one of these two units we are putting at stake. Bookmakers think that motivations are very important. Comes the last game of the season. And of course, Empoli are fighting for salvation and need to win. A draw might not be enough for them unless Udinese loses. But do motivations make Empoli players better or enough good to beat Roma, a team that ages ago, at the beginning of the season, beat them 7-0. Now, Empoli are in a poor state of form. They are really struggling for goals. They suffer a 140-minute equalizer against Udinese last weekend that probably, you know, shattered the confidence. And Roma won against Genoa. Of course, they're going to support Bologna. They're going to support Torino. They're going to support Juventus because of the fourth place of Atalanta. But after all, there is pride at stake. De Rossi, young manager, so definitely not somebody of the old school that, you know, that gives the, the last game away. If they, if they lose this against Empoli, what are Frosinone and Indonesia going to think about them? What is the league going to think about them? This is not a game that Roma go there and tackle lightly and, yeah, and get beaten. Yeah, there might be changes, there might be turnover, but they want to finish on a high. A six-point finish with 60, 63 points It's very, very respectable for them. For me, they're not going to lose this one. Simple, straight, clear. They might draw and, you know, Empoli might play the playoff against Udinese. Roma and Andy are plus 0.75, minus 152. Yeah, I think what could be key as well in this game is how Udinese are faring. If Udinese are leading, then Empoli get to know about that. I think they could easily down tools, but we will see. Uh, it's a good play. Like this one, Roma, outsiders. Uh, one more thing Empoli. as well. This game is not going to be played exactly a la bombonera. You know, they're going to be played at the Castellani of Empoli. Average capacity, 12,000. There are going to be a few thousand uh, to Porto for Roma. It's not exactly the most intimidating atmosphere there. Huh? So, Roma, we like on the Asian handicap. Let's get to James' first play. We're going to cover the, the Coup de France fairly extensively. It is Lyon versus Paris Saint-Germain in Lille. Uh, Lyon are plus 410 to win in 90 minutes. Paris Saint-Germain minus 167. The draw plus 300 here. Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern, incidentally, for the cup final. James, lots of bets coming up on the cup final. I guess because this is your two-unit play, this is your favourite, this is your best bet on the, on the cup final. Tell us. Yes, if you're having one bet on the French Cup final this weekend, then this would be the pick for me. It's yes in the both teams to score market. It's available at minus 148, which on first glance might be a bit short to people. I suppose in a French league game, we don't often have uh, yes in the both teams to score market at minus 148. Um, but actually, I think if these two sides were going up against each other in, in League One, you might well find it. And I think it is justified. Um so, you know, sometimes people would argue cup finals aren't necessarily the most open games. There's lots of tension and teams being nervous about conceding, et cetera, et cetera. But I think on two big metrics, there is reason to believe that we'll see goals here and we'll see chances. The first of which are the head-to-head -head games between these two sides uh, this season. PSG won both the home and the away head-to-head -head in League One this season by a scoreline of 4-1. So we saw both teams on the score line on the on the score sheet in both of those games they were open i think obviously you can argue whether they should have been as open as to have five goals but having seen the games they were open matches with chances for both sides so we already have some history there from this season of um of goals from both teams and then the other metric down which is arguably even more important is about the form if you look at the final 10 league games for both of these two sides eight out of 10 matches for both of them went yes in the both teams to score market. So we've had a run of matches up to the end of the League One season from both Lyon and PSG where they've been scoring goals and they've also uh, been conceding goals. And I don't really see any reason why 
why that form won't carry over into the final, Dan, because I think anybody watching the game, Steve and I obviously watch a lot of League One matches. We know that both of these teams are better going forward than they are defensively. Um, it, it's not that they neglect defending. It's just that they've got a lot of power up front and they tend to play on the front foot anyway. It's the way the managers like the, the, the teams to play. So I think we'll see that happen. It might not happen straight away. There might be a little bit of caginess early on, but I would be very surprised to see either of these two sides uh, manage to keep a clean sheet. And yeah, that was the way I looked at this. I, I saw the price, as I say, it's obviously maybe a bit shorter than some people would like, but I still think it's a good pick. So that's my my two unit play. It's both teams to score. Yes. And it's available at minus 148. Shining like the show from August all the way through to May has been the hot dogs. Um, Steve came up with a concept right at the start of the season and carried the show for the first half of the campaign before James and Danielle weighed in with some really good selections. And Steve, it will be in profit whatever happens after a couple of pushes last week. Have I got that right? You have, yeah. The hot dog will be in profit for the season, which it deserves to be because there's been uh, a lot of uh, good picks in this uh, se segment of the show from everyone across the board right from August through. So I'm really pleased about that. One in Spain, one in Italy and one in the French Cup final for you. Uh, let's get the hot dogs for the final time this season. Uh, Steve, we're in Spain, 10.15am Sunday kickoff. Alaves uh, against Las Palmas. Yeah, for the final hot dog of the season, I've decided to keep it simple and kind of go back to basics. What what kind of worked for me with a hot dog for most of the season, just simply to back a team on the money line. And more often than not, it wasn't a away team. And I'm going to go with Alaves here to beat Las Palmas. And first of all, I want to congratulate both teams for surviving this season. Um, and that's a fair achievement in, uh, you know, a tough La Liga. But for me, Alaves have been by far the better of the two sides. If we actually look at expected points, Las Palmas would be comfortably in the bottom three. Alaves knocking on the door of the top 10. And um, the only way they can guarantee themselves a top 10 placing is by winning this game. Now, I say there's not a lot at stake, you know, in this round, in the final round for Spain, but I think Alaves to finish in the top 10, that's got to be a bit of a dangling carrot for them, surely. That would be a really fine achievement for them to say at the end of the season, you know, we finish in the top 10. So I think they can come here and beat a Las Palmas side who have only just now achieved survival, you know, round 37. Um, it's been a horrendous finish to the season for them. I mean, they've hardly had a win since the turn of the new year. Um, you know, they've struggled for goals, desperately struggled for goals. I think they failed to score in eight of the last 10 games. And this is a side that, you know, I actually mentioned in the last few weeks that they've maybe been on the beach a bit. I think now that it's almost relief for them. You know, they've, they've, they've finally achieved the survival. I think, you know, some might say, oh, it can free them up a bit, but I, I think they might put in a bit of a poor performance here. Um, you know, their recent home results have been shocking. Um, and Alaves, yeah, they've, they've actually finished the season quite well. Three, uh, four wins, sorry, in the last six games. Um, you know, they've had no real reason to finish that strong, but I guess it just shows the professionalism within the squad. Both sides have really underachieved in front of goal, but Alaves do have a striker I've quite liked this season. Um, Samu Omorodion, who has caught the eye at, at times. He has gone a bit um, off the boil recently. They've got a few players who I think have got a bit more about them than Las Palmas. Las Palmas are massively on my radar next season to go to get relegated. Alaves might have second season syndrome, but I just think they're the better side. Plus 200. I'm surprised they're the underdog here, Dan. I really am. Um, I just think they're by far the better side. I hope they don't just come here and give up and be like, oh, we'll come to Gran Canaria for a holiday or something. Because they really, the win is there for them for the taking if they want it. So uh, Alaves for me, final hot dog of the season, on the money line, straight on the nose to win, at plus 200. Next from Danielli, who goes for an Asian handicap line that I don't think we've had on the show uh, this season. Um, it's Milan against Salernitana, which is 2.45 Saturday Eastern. Um, Daniele is uh, going to go out swinging with his hot dog. Biggest price hot dog of the three. Daniele, all yours? 
difficult one really because there's nothing to play for between the second in the table and the relegated the Salernitana but I'm going to go for Asian Handicap minus three for the home side for the Rossoneri which pays plus 235 so Milan needs to win at least 4-0 5-1 for you to cash this price 3-0 you get your money back uh, really uh, Milan needs to finish on a high uh, I think the season has been decent uh, second place in the table. I don't think they could have done much more than what they actually did, losing the Scudetto in the derby. It's something that they're going to remain in history, but after that, the performances have been okay. Torino were better than them at the weekend. Last two, two weeks ago, they beat Cagliari 5-1. And yes, it's uh, the curtain for a manager, Pioli, that's going to leave the club at the end of the season. It's going to be a few changes. Milan, hopefully for them, they're going to come back stronger next year with the new players and the one that they signed this summer with a little bit more of experience. They've scored a few goals at home. They got a good record and also they got the second best home record. So they might win this one 2 nil for Salernitana. Nothing to say. I have to say congratulations for Steve who picked them to go down at the beginning of the season and he was absolutely right. Last season Salernitana have drawn an awful lot of games. So the season really could have gone. Either way, three, cha- three managers changed this season. Uh, they haven't totally given given up because they scored in five of the last seven. But yeah, the values on the pitch are going to be so, so different. Yeah, probably Milan wins this 5-1 for me. But yeah, Asian handicap minus three plus two thirty-five. Big Milan win we're hoping for for the game on Saturday night locally. Saturday afternoon, Eastern time in the States. Likewise, for the cup final, we go back to the action in Lille. And as per usual from James, we've got a shot on target pick, but not just one required this time around, James. No, two shots required this time around. And the pick is on Alexandra Lacazette of Lyon to have over 1.5 shots on target. He's available at plus 205. So Lacazette, for those that haven't followed Lyon closely this season, has been absolutely outstanding, especially in the second half of the season, Dan. he If you go back to December, he hit a hat-trick in a league game against Toulouse in December, and that really sparked him into life. And, and since that game, if you include that game, he scored 19 times as Lacazette in 21 starts in all competitions. Absolutely fantastic form, averaging almost a goal a game. I'd say since December, he's probably been as important to Leon as any player has been to their team in League One this season. Um, a big reason why they've climbed up the league table. Uh, they finished in the European places, having been uh, contenders for relegation at the half halfway mark of the season. And Lacazette's been a, a really big part of that. So I see him as a, a good chance here to have two shots on target because, number one, he's in such great scoring form. Um, number two, he'll be on the penalties. So if they win a penalty in regulation time, it'll fall to Lacazette to take it. And um, and he's an experienced player. I don't think he'll be phased at all by a game like this. There'll be no sense of him you know, having... He, he might not have a good game, but I don't think he will be down to nerves or the size of the occasion. So... I looked at this price. Obviously, you're, you're playing PSG. You could argue that players are less likely to get good scoring chances against top opposition like PSG. That might make the game a bit more difficult for him. But I'm not sure it will, actually, because he's he's in such great form. And as I've said with my, my two-unit pick, I'm expecting some chances here. So everything at Leon will go towards Lacazette. He plays up front on his own in a 4-3-3. The, the lion's share of the chances will be going to him. And he and he does stay in this Leon side in those central areas in front of goal. Yeah, he links play a little bit, but there's not much uh, chance of him moving out wide. I wouldn't have thought in the game to to play out there. They, they usually play with two wingers and he stays pretty central. So I think everything will go through Lacazette. As I say, he's had a fantastic t- season. I think France have made a mistake, just slightly off topic, not picking him for their... Yeah, I was, just, I was just looking at the squad. To, I mean, I knew, I knew he wasn't going to be in the squad because he hasn't been for ages, but I just thought, I just have a yeah. quick double check there. He's not made it, has he? He's not made it. He was never going to make it. He's no. not a Deschamps player. So it wasn't a surprise, but I think it's a huge mistake personally because he's... I think the France squad actually lacks players who can score goals. It sounds silly, but a lot of their attacking players, while they're very good, Dembele... Uh, Barkala, Kola, Wani, they're not goal scorers and Lacazette is. He's very close to Antoine Griezmann. He would have fitted in very easily. But So for him, this is a really big game for that reason as well, actually. He's not going to the Euros. This is his final game of the season. It's a chance for a player who's been fantastic for years in two spells at Lyon uh, to, uh, to win a piece of silverware. He'll be really up for it. And I think 
at the very least, you'll get a good run for your money here because he's going to be fully involved and he is the main man for Leon. So that's the pick. It's Lacazette over 1.5 shots on target at plus 205. Let's get some second official picks. Um, we go Italy once again. Steve Juventus, Monza, you've gone for here midday uh, Saturday. Uh, nothing really up for grabs. You've have qualified for the Champions League. Monza, uh, I've spun it as aiming for their joint best top flight finish, although they didn't uh, get as many points as, as they uh, got last year. Whatever happens, um, what's the what's the thinking here? What's the play? This is where my rule breaking starts, Dan. So, um <laughs> I'm going against some of my sort of principal rules and some of my ne ne next few bets. And I've always grown up, um, dialed into my head, never bet an over in a Juventus game, never bet both teams. I can just imagine Steve Wister, six years old, thinking <laughs> never bet an over. <laughs> It's Watching just Del Piero. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> they've just like from a whole lifetime, they've felt like a mega defensive team who just keep it tight and win one nil every week. And um, I've never I just don't never do it, but I, both teams to score yes looks a massive price here on the final day of the season at minus one fifteen. I mean, what has happened to Juventus? If you've been betting on them on the money line since well, twenty seventh of January, you wouldn't have any money left, would you? Mm. They've only won two games since the 27th of January in, in Serie A, which is absurd. I mean, they've had more draws than U Udinese, I think, in that period. Um, yeah, yeah. Absolutely remarkable stuff. Um, actually, why are these lot not my fade of the week? Uh, <laughs> one to three, because they've hardly won a game. But um, I think both teams score yes here. Juventus just been sloppy. It feels like the last couple of months, the defence nowhere near as strong as it used to be. Just had a three-all draw against Bologna, which was very unexpected and crazy, but kind of sums them up what's happened to them recently. Um, you know, Monza have enjoyed quite a decent season, I think, in Serie A. They, have, they haven't won a game in the last seven or eight. They've, they've kind of finished a little bit poorly, but I think they've got a goal in them. Danielli's often backed the overs in their games or BTTS this season because it's often the big price. They had a, a really massive reputation early on in the season for this low scoring stuff. They've got a huge XGA overachievement. I think the goalkeeper is a big part of that from what I know of about him. Yep. Um, in fact, actually they've got the fifth worst expected goals against in the league. So they're not exactly that as watertight as you think. So this one might be going under the radar, just a bit of a, a bit sloppy pricing up. Both teams score yes at minus 115, Dan. Um, I, I really think this could be probably a more open and offensive game than you think um, at the back end of the season when really there's not a lot at, lot, a lot at stake in terms of actually ultimate outcome for the season. The Juventus can get in the top three, but um, you know, they're in the Champions League, aren't they? Whatever. So, uh, yeah, going against my own rule book here, but hey, it's the last day of term, isn't it? So I'll take it, take the hit. Danielli? Difficult to trust Juventus, really, these days. Uh, although they beat Atalanta, imagine, imagine, imagine. Oh, is is, uh, is Motta going to take the job next year? Is that is that? Ah, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be yeah. sealed, confirmed very very soon. Big big uh, big step for Motta. Big task in hand. As it stands, Juventus are not Scudetto material. Maybe with the addition of a couple of players, but yeah, for this game against Monza, anything could happen. Monza winless in eight. Difficult to play without motivations. And to tell you how disappointed Juventus have been this season, they're gonna finish this season with less points in the table than last year, with a little bit difference. They didn't play in Europe this season, so yeah. Yeah, mm, that was always the thing, wasn't it? We talked about it early season, yeah. would you? Um, take advantage of not playing those midweek. It just didn't Clearly happen. Um, Verona Inter, uh, for you, Daniele, for your second play here. But Inter are minus money favourites by quite some degree. Minus 180, Verona plus 430. I don't think there's anything on it for either side. Um, how might this game turn out? This, judging by your pick, looks sort of fairly standard last day Serie A fair here. What's the play? Under three goals, minus 134. I can't imagine Inter going a full throttle. They're probably going to give spaces to those players that played less minutes. The only thing that is on the line is for Inter is the record of clean sheet in Serie A. One more clean sheet and they get to 22, which is the all-time record. But yes, after having celebrated the Scudetto last week at home against Lazio, I think that's probably it for Inter. By the way, under a new ownership because uh, Mr. Zhang, the Sunim finally... Fa uh, 
the Swinning family couldn't return the loan of 275 million plus 15% interest to Oak Tree, who obviously got hold of the club and they are the new owner. What does it mean in the long, medium term? We still don't know. Lautaro still needs to renew his contract. Imagine who's going to find on the other side of that desk. But Verona, by the way, we need to praise the lyrics because uh, they done really well. They sold 12 players in January, brought a lot of young players, managed to be really solid, really difficult to beat, and, you know, strong character. A congratulation to Baroni, who achieved salvation with Lecce last season and this season as well. A team that hardly, hardly get trashed so far. Under three goals, I think is an end of the season game, probably a draw. Let's see if Inter managed to keep that clean sheet, but yeah, nothing to play for. Uh, more from the Coupe de France from James next. Lyon versus Paris Saint-Germain. And we dive into uh, what for me would be a fairly obscure market. I don't know if it's uh, always on, on your radar, James, but you've got something for us here when it comes to corners. Yeah, no, it's not, Dan. I'm with you on that. Uh, the corners three-way spread market. It's the first time I've ever done a tip from this market. So I, I suppose we should explain the market first. The corners three-way spread market. Um, the tip is Leon with a 2-0 start at minus 108. So what that means is you're going into the game as if Leon are already 2-0 up on corners. And then you need Leon to end up with more corners in the game than PSG, including the 2-0 start that you gave them. So that's effectively what it's doing. It's a bit, I suppose, like the Asian handicap market on the match odds market, leveling things up with a goal start or a goal deficit. It's similar to that. So it's... No Leon, push, though, I guess, here, is there? If, it, if it's yes. level, that's the key thing, isn't that, it? That's the key thing. Absolutely right, Dan. The tie is in play here. That's why it's the three-way spread and, and not a two-way spread. You're absolutely right. So, Leon 2-0 starts on corners, minus 108, and you need them to end up winning on corners rather than being level or losing on corners. Um, and, and really, yeah, it's not a market I look at often, but one of those statistical anomalies that you see occasionally does come up if you look at the head-to-head -head games between these two sides this season, which PSG won comfortably, as we said, on both occasions, 4-1 wins. And yet on both occasions, Lyon were comfortably ahead on the corners count, which is really weird uh, because they were fairly typical games in many ways. PSG dominated uh, possession, ended up winning the game, had the better chances on both on, 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 with both fixtures. And yet both times, Leon ended up with more corners. In the first match between the sides, uh, Leon won 5-2 on corners that was back in September and the second game which was just in April Leon won 10-4 on mm. corners so it's a weird statistical anomaly if you look over the season uh, the corner situation is slightly different PSG have had more corners in games than Leon, although the the four and against corners is is fairly level but I couldn't really overlook just how strong those head-to-head -head corner stats were it's it's obvious in the two games they played that uh, Leon have won more corners, even though they've had less of the ball and even though they've lost the game. So if you think the French Cup final will go to form, which would be PSG winning and having more of the ball, then then why would the corners not follow suit? So yeah, it's as I say, it's not a market I look at often, but I think the stats on the corners in those heads-to-heads are pretty strong. And I think with you having a 2-0 start here as well for Leon on the corners market, I think it's worth looking at. So that's the pick. It's the corners, three-way spread market, Leon with a 2-0 start, and it's available at minus 108. I think this is a really good play. If, a lot of people just look at the averages, and I will guarantee you that most of the odds compilers will just look at the averages as well. And when you have a bit of a, a deeper dive, if you can get in some head-to-head, -head, some uh, significant head-to-head -head stats on some of these prop markets that can pay dividends and you can get value plays, let's hope so this week. Uh, second week of our new section, and it may well be the last. Um, <laughs> this is the fade the favourites, where our cappers are looking to fade a favourite to bet against a team uh, we think that isn't good value to win. So we're looking at the double chance market here. Didn't quite come good for us last week, but it's a very small sample size. We might keep it on next season. We'll have a deep dive into what went right and wrong over the summer for you. Let's rattle through these here because we're running out of time to a certain extent. We've got plenty to get through still. Uh, Steve, which favourite are you fading and why? Just some early teething problems, that's all, Dan. Um, <laughs> I still really liked my fade last week, and PSG kicked off close to even money. They rested a lot of players. They rocked up and won 2-0. I'll work that out, you know, with a, with a depleted side. Anyway, um, another rule break I'm doing here. I'm fading Real Madrid. Uh, you know, 
this is not a good idea usually, is it? To bet against Real Madrid. I've done it in the Champions League. You meant to be League, talking us into the bet, not talking us out of the bet. In Go fact, on. I'm almost re- I'm almost regretting this fade. I can have Juventus <laughs> instead. Um, but listen, look, they've got a, next week is the Champions League final. Real Madrid are involved in the Champions League final. Now, you've got to be looking ahead to that. I'm sorry, but you just there's got to be rotation. There's got to be protection of players. The players themselves won't want to get injured things like that. I just think they've got to be looking ahead and there's no way I'd be having them at, um, I think they're close to minus uh, minus 200 here against uh, Real Betis. Yeah, Real Betis um, all the time is, is plus 200. But minus 295 Real Madrid to win. Just, I wouldn't I wouldn't touch them here. Um, they have won, won nine of the last 10 games, but they were 4-1 up last week against Villarreal and Drew. Now, Real Betis have a very good record here at um, the Bernabeu. You wouldn't believe this. They have, um, in the last six visits here, they lost last year 2-1. But prior to that, they had three nil-nil draws. And then they won two games in a row here. Can't be many sides that have that sort of record mm. at this venue. I know it's the last game of the season and they're guaranteed seventh place, whatever. But they've got to be up for this. It's the sort of place you would be up for playing, wouldn't it? Even on the last round. You want to, you know, there's always a lot of eyes on, on Real Madrid. So, I quite like Real Madrid here to get a draw. At worst, and um, yeah, I think it'll be quite a low tempo sort of game. Real Madrid won't want to get stuck in, will they? Could be, I don't know, maybe not nil nil, but one all or something. Um, I certainly would not be backing Real Madrid at minus 295 with the Champions League um, final on the horizon, Dan. Yeah, no, it's good, good reasoning and a big price for a fade to favorite. We're usually looking at minus money ones, not big plus money ones. Um, Danielle, you've talked about this game before, but just remind us, Empoli Roma, you're fading Empoli here. I'm fading Empoli, the big favourites, the big champions, you know, the team that probably going to play in Serie B next season, who are <laughs> favourite against Roma, who went inch closer from beating Bayer Leverkusen. But that's easy. Atalanta showed yesterday. Roma <laughs> tie, minus 118 uh, for Roma to get at least a point from the Castellani. A point might be enough for Empoli to be saved as long as Udinese loses. Honor. Uh, career record is on the line as well for uh, De Rossi you know a few months in charge by ending the season on a defeat overall Roma are stronger minus under 18 for Roma not to lose at the Castellani yeah I like this if this was any other time of the season we would be looking at fame Roma and by maybe, the way not, by the way yeah. I can I can well, give you a bit of background yes we have a chat you know as, as all the professionals have have a chat uh, Will Will White one of the handicappers yesterday as soon as I posted this pic on the chat he wrote me personally and he said i want to get your because this is the pr- things i've been looking over all week i want to get your your insight so we exchanged ideas and i managed to convince him so yeah uh, if we lose this at least what we did he good... want to do was he was he no, looking he... to back empoli no he was torn whether to back empoli or to go on the double chance for roma but he was uh, leaning towards the double chance for Roma and I talked him into it and we discussed motivation, etc. So if we lose, uh, Will, if you're listening, if you're watching, well, we are in good company. So yeah. But l- listen, I, I don't want to give it. A, I mean, look, Will, Will is a professional. He pays his mortgage with them um, uh, with what yes. he wins. So you know, no pressure there. And his his family's expanded recently, and you know, he's got a lot of you know outside him. But anyway, uh, <laughs> no, but I love the fact that he was so attent to what I was. Yeah, uh, no, he'll ta- look, he'll take every as we all will. We'll take every little in we can. Um, and James is going to explain why Paris Saint Germain are false favourites against Leon here, James. Yeah, I do think PSG are too short to win this game, Dan, at well, minus 167. This is 90 in... minutes as well, we have to stress. Yeah, in 90 minutes. So, Leon or Ty, if you are looking for a bet in the Fade the Favourites market on the French Cup, you could either leave it alone or you could go with this one. But I think Leon or Ty at plus 123 is pretty, pretty good, actually. There's two main reasons, Dan, why I think PSG are slightly overrated to win. I don't object to them being favourites. Obviously, they should be favourites. But the first reason is focus and motivation. There are concerns that PSG simply aren't that bothered about winning the French Cup. You might think they would be to complete the domestic double, but we're not sure they are. You know, their big target, as always, was the Champions League. And when they went out of that, there's a suggestion they might have switched off. Um, Kylian Mbappe hosted a farewell meal in Paris on Monday night for him and some of his teammates and family and friends, which has led to rumours that, you know, he's A, not that bothered about the cup final, B, might not even play in the cup final. Mm-hmm. We don't know. There, are, there is talk about that. And Luis Enrique, the PSG manager, has made quite a big play out of saying, I'll only pick people who I think are up for the game. 
I mean, imagine having to say that before a cup final, right? So there is a suggestion already that for PSG, this game isn't a, a, a very big deal. Some of their players have obviously got eyes on big international tournaments for their countries already. So that's the first factor I think counts against PSG. The second is simply the form, Dan. If you look at the form book, Lyon are actually in better form than PSG. Look at the five-game form table in League One. Lyon have got more points. Look at the 10-game form table. Same thing. 15-game, 20-game, same thing as well. So actually, in the second half of the League One season, Lyon have picked up more points than PSG, however you want to split it up. So, yeah, PSG, should they be favourites? Yes, they are the better team. They've obviously got the better players. But I do think their odds are slightly too short. And I think, you know, you might prefer Lyon on the Asian handicap with a plus one goal start. I think that's available at minus 127, something like that. So you get your stakes back if they lose by a single goal. Mm -hmm. But in the fade the favourite market, I wouldn't talk anybody out of backing Lyon or Thai, which is available at minus, uh, at plus 128. Brilliant stuff. Uh, love all those fades. Let's hope we get some winners. If they all win, we'll be in profit for the fade to fade section. We've only had it for two weeks. If we lose, it will never appear again. Uh, extra picks very quickly from everyone here. Let's just get a line on each. Uh, Steve, what you got for us, a goal scorer? Alexander Sherloff to score any time for Villarreal. It's now plus 165. He um, The Pachichi race is close between Dovbic and himself, he he might he may need a goal depending what happens in the Girona game to win this award. And he just scored four goals against Real Madrid. How can you be plus one sixty five to score against Osasuna? This is a man who scored nine goals in his last six games. Absolutely no. Even if he's already won the Pachitsi, he'll want to put the icing on the cake, won't he? So plus one sixty five anytime. Alexander Sherlock to score anytime for Villarreal against Osasuna. Brilliant stuff. Danielle, you've gone Atalanta, Torino, the uh, Leverkusen Slayers back in action here. Bound to be a lot of changes. Nigel texted us this morning about half past six saying that there's been a, a big move on Torino. Is that because Atalanta will be partying between now and kickoff or that Torino need something significant from the game? Just give us your thoughts on that and your play. With both, Torino with a win confirms the place in the Conference League. If right. they draw and Napoli win, is Napoli goes into the Conference League? Do they want to go into the Conference League? That's the big question. Both to score. For me, Torino will want to definitely go in Europe. Minus 130, uh, not invulnerable Atalanta home. Torino have been picked up results uh, recently. Yeah, it could be a draw. They'll celebrate the Euref, UEFA, Conference, UEFA Europa League with a good result. Atalanta still, of course, a game in hand on the 2nd of June. Both teams to score, yes, is the play, but there has been a massive move for Torino off the back of Atalanta's uh, Europa League success. And finally, uh, we go away from France for James's final pick and we back in the shot on target market. And just one required this time for a, a famous Atleti striker. Yes, Antoine Griezmann uh, for Atletico Madrid, over 0.5 shots on target against his former club, Real Sociedad, minus 108. This is all about form, Dan. Uh, two games ago, Griezmann got a hat-trick in a 3-1 win against Getafe. And the last six matches he started in La Liga, he's managed 19 shots on goal in total, and he's had a shot on target in four of those six games. So this is a guy in form in the shots on target market. That's why I'm back in Griezmann. He's available at minus 108. Wonderful stuff. Official parlays next. We had half a unit on all three last week and we didn't get any return. So let's hope that we get a little bit more as another one that a section that won't be returning uh, next week. Um, last throw of the dice really to get us close uh, to profit. Steve, you are going out swinging here. This is what I like. Um, although one, um, I'm going to have to mark you down for your seasonal report card because you've included a Friday night game. Talk us through your parlay. I told you I'm breaking some rules now, done, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. uh, I put the yellow cards out for me here. Yeah, it's a Friday game, so we better get this show out a ASAP. Um, Artem Dobbik to score at least two goals for Girona against uh, Granada in the Pachichi race. Honestly, I mean, I'm hoping he scores a hat trick to motivate Shaw off the next day, but uh, I think he can get a couple of goals. That's it. That's plus one sixty. The second part of the parlay is Almeria minus one Asian handicap against Cadiz. Bad things happen when you bet on bad teams, and they are bad. They've had two wins all season, but Cadiz have just gone down. Um, they're terrible. I think they will they might just mail this one in and give up, and it's a kind of a dress rehearsal for La Liga 2 next season. Almeria, they've been relegated since Christmas. I think they'll be up for it. I think they can finally get another win. And final part of the parlay, 
Real Sociedad, not a team that have done that well on this show. They won for me last time, though. I think they beat Atletico Madrid at home. Atletico Madrid were terrible last week against Osasuna. They know they're finishing fourth. And I think Real Sociedad have actually, at home, they've outplayed a lot of big teams this season. I think they can finish with a win in front of their own fans. This isn't plus now, plus eight one plus 18.08. So it's 70, effectively an 18-1 to one parlay. Um, half a unit. Dovbit, two or more goals. Almeria, minus one Asian handicap. Real Sociedad, money line. Come on, let's uh, let's cash this big winner. Um, uh, not quite as uh, ambitious from Daniele. Midday Sunday, we start for your three-team parley. Daniele. Napoli-Lecce over 2.5 goals. Difficult to trust Napoli this season, but again, if they win, they'll finish in the Conference League. Lazio, Sassuolo, Lazio, is an handicap minus one. And Empoli-Roma in the evening in Italy. Roma or Thai, Parley, Alpha Unit, plus 371. Fantastic stuff. And that Lazio selection just um, obviously ties in what Steve was saying earlier in the show for his 2U play. And James, this is um, a same game parley effectively because you are looking at just uh, the French Cup final uh, for uh, your 14 parlay. Four yeah, so, parlay. F- yeah, four full parlay. Some of these uh, picks have been explained really in the earlier uh, analysis of the game. But yeah, four picks here in the parlay over 2.5 goals. Under 9.5 corners, Lacazette to have over 0.5 shots on target and Kylian Mbappe to score. Will he start? Well, if he does start, I think he'll score. Uh, that's a fourfold parlay and it will pay out at plus 450. Brilliant stuff. As we did last week, <laughs> correct scores for the final day of the oh, season. Yeah. Uh, Steve's going to tackle Spain. Daniele is obviously... Uh, going to tack, uh, tackle Italy. <laughs> We're just going to do Saturday and Sunday here. Steve, did we get any right last week in the Bundesliga? No, I was close enough. Um, <laughs> I had another go in the Premier League live you show as well. close tickets these days. <laughs> <laughs> I had another go. Sorry. Premier League Premier League live show. We all, me, Nigel, Neil Channing. Did you get any right? I think Channing's got a few right, didn't he? Chan- Channing's was the only one who got two right. Of course it was Channing's, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right, come on then. Here we go. Let's do this quickly to wrap up yeah, the show and wrap on. up the season. Real Madrid versus Real Betis. Uh, one all draw. Uh, Real Sociedad against Atletico Madrid. Real Sociedad two, Atletico Madrid one. Uh, Rio against Athletic Bilbao. Athletic Club. Uh, Athletic Sorry, Bilbao hit. to win 2 0. Bilbao to win 2 0. Athletic Club 2 0. Osasuna Villarreal. Uh, Osasuna one, Villarreal three. Almeria Cadiz. Amaria three, Cadiz nil. Like that one. That's on the uh, on the pick, isn't it? Um, Sevilla, Barcelona. This is Sunday we're moving into. It feels like a two-all draw to me. Celta Vigo against Valencia. Uh, there's always one bad game. Let's go nil-nil. <laughs> Etafe against Mallorca. Um, neither team score many goals, do they? So we'll go one-all. How many overs have we got here? Las Palmas against Alaves. Alaves to win two-nil. Great stuff. Uh, Daniel, oh, hold on, gonna... you're missing one, the Friday what? night. Uh, I wasn't going to do Fridays. We're not well, allowed fi- Fridays. I'm, I'm predicting 5-1. I'm predicting 5-1 to Girona. one for the Friday night game. Who's that? Girona against who? Granada. Granada. Um, Daniele, obviously going to tackle um, uh, Italy. I mean, Daniele, you see, when he emailed me, he said, I won't do Thursday or Friday because obviously the show won't be out. See, Daniele sticks to the rules. That's what I like about that. <laughs> I read. I read. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, 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 I send emails out all John week. with the job no spec. Read, read the email from Dan. And <laughs> okay, Saturday games. Juventus against Monza. 2-1 for you. Uh, Milan, Salernitana on Saturday. 5-0 for the hosts. The five nil, we like that one. Um, on Sunday, I'm commentating on Atalanta. Torino got a late call for TNT for the Europa League winners. What are we thinking here, Daniel? One one. Well, thanks a lot. I'm looking forward to it even more now. Empoli against Roma. Roma to win one nil. Uh, Lazio Sassuolo. Lazio two nil. Uh, Napoli Lecce. Talk of the week: Lecce three, Napoli one. Oh my word! Verona Inter. One one. <laughs> uh, Frosinone Udinese. Last one, one one, one one. A lot of draw. yeah, it could be a draws, couldn't he? I might yeah. do, might do a draw parlay. I think for me, uh, for the uh, weekend games in Italy, and uh, we don't want to leave James out. And let's face it, we've covered every other market, including three way <laughs> handicap corner mark, not handicap, corner markets in 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 the cup final. So we better get a correct score from you, James. What do you think the correct score is going to be? Uh, Think Leon... about all the bets that you've had. He's got to tie into that. Oh, don't worry, I've done that. Uh, <laughs> Leon two, Paris Saint Germain two. Wonderful stuff. 
Uh, that wraps up Betting Weekly. Extra time, European show for the season. But an absolute pleasure, Steve, uh, Daniele, James. Thanks for your company. And a word for Rory, RJ and Will, who also took part earlier. Um, yeah, yeah. I just want to say um, it's been it's been a great season. Uh, thanks to all the pals. Thanks to you, Dan. No well, what's your best? What's your best bet for the? Do you know what? I knew you were going to ask me this, and I was going to have a look, and I've not had a look, so I'll put it. I'll put it on my for my three hundred and seventy five Twitter followers. It'll be an exclusive on that for you uh, ahead of the week. I just want to say thanks to you. You, the, the, you do a lot of work in the background, which not a lot of people are aware of, uh, and get as well organised for the uh, for these shows. Even though occasionally we might break the rules and mm. go off script. So um, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Great stuff. Um, follow us. Via our Twitter handle at Because We Win. All the boys are on Twitter, as I'm sure you know. And we've got our YouTube channel as well. We'll have lots more over the course of the summer. We're back for the European Championships in Germany. Uh, James, Daniele and Steve all involved in that. So plenty to come over the course of the summer when it comes to the football before we roll into next season. From all of us for the European show, though, for this campaign, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. We'll see you next season.